I remember the day I came back from Vietnam. We were promised a steak dinner. When we landed in California, I remember telling my wife one time that was one of the few times I cried. I, I remember the day I came home. It's like yesterday. My family met me at the airport. Man, it was just so wonderful to be alive, for one thing. Yes, I can. I don't remember when I came home. We were out processed in probably a day and a half or two days. It was a new world to me. I'd never seen men with long hair all the way to their waist, and uh, that surprised me. I watched people in the airport. They would have a young lady who would come up and smiling like she had a bunch of flowers to give to the service people. And the next thing you know, the men with her would hit you with balloons of blood. They told us as we were getting ready to land, change into your civilian gear. So we got off that airplane in civilian clothes because to do otherwise would have been maybe some, some nasty fights. When you go through and you fought for your country and then to have people do that to you, that's not something you get over real quick. When I got home, the dog that I had before I left even barked at me <laughs> when I got out of the car. But uh, that soon resolved itself. And yeah, I remember that day. Nearly three million servicemen and women served in the Vietnam War. We have approximately 850,000 Vietnam veterans living in the United States today. A community of veterans who served in one of the most complex military conflicts in American history. Many of them suffer from PTSD. Hello everybody, I'm Tony Orlando, and this is Close to Home. Understand it took me 40 years to admit that I'd been in Vietnam. I never talked about it in the 38 years that I worked on the railroad. Nobody knew I had been in the Marine Corps or, or that I had been in Vietnam. I never talked about it. I just kept it all to myself. I never forget uh, so a little boy crying and coming at us, and I hope this isn't too graphic, but bottom part of his arm was hanging by, by some skin. That was it. Everything else was gone. You never forget that. I was an executive officer in a logistical support activity, a captain in a major slot while I was in Vietnam. I got to see the really dirty side of combat. And it was just one day after another of horrific things that came your way. The most troubling was the way that we handled the casualties of war. Writing those letters home was one of the toughest parts of the job. We had focus in uh, trying to get the mission accomplished. Not that we actually thought about that. I was only 18 at the time. What do you think about when you're 18? And you put into a war zone, it's mostly uh, getting to know the people that you're around and trying to survive. I came away from that experience changed. I didn't know I had changed. We were expected to do things. Look for danger, always looking for danger. When you come home, you can't just turn that off. After going through special forces training and getting my beret, and then going to Vietnam and working in special operations, this world is not the same. I was not the same. If I start talking as I'm doing now, talking about Vietnam, I begin to smell Vietnam. I smell it as if I was there right now. Service men and women have always been impacted by war. During World War II, it was called shell shock or battle fatigue. But the term post-traumatic stress disorder wasn't officially recognized until 1980. More important than not having a formal name, we didn't know what to do to help these poor souls who were suffering. 
from these symptoms. What we call PTSD isn't just one thing, it's a lot of things. It's this condition that affects the body, the mind, and the spirit all in one. PTSD is a natural reaction to an unnatural event. It's not natural for people to be in a jungle trying to kill one another. The symptoms of PTSD occur in four clusters. The first cluster of symptom is called unwanted recurrent thinking about the event. You will remember things that happened. The sad things that happened and the horrible things that happened. The second cluster of symptoms is called conscious avoidance. I didn't like to go to any kind of social gatherings. Going to the movies was out of the question. And mother and children don't understand why, and that begins the, the wedge between post-traumatic stress and the loving life that we had. The third are negative thoughts and emotions, increased anger, irritability, and agitation things that cause the veteran to have difficulty being with other people, working, even being with family members. When my father went to World War II and came home, we didn't talk about it. When Terry went to Vietnam and came back, we didn't talk about it. Tell you the truth, uh, it just seems like it's always been one problem after another. In the process, I ruined uh, my marriage and family all because uh, I didn't talk about it. And the fourth cluster is called increased hyperarousal. That's what most of us think of when we imagine what PTSD must be like. For example, being easily startled. I quickly learned that I had to be very careful. I came home one day and he was asleep on the couch. Well, I bent over to kiss him and he hauled off to hit me. And so I realized then I couldn't wake him up, you know, like that anymore. You know, family and friends look at their loved ones who have PTSD in a state of astonishment. They can't believe very often that the person who went to war behaving one way comes back behaving a completely different way. Military life is by the book. Civilian life is not the same way. Now you're an adult, you're trying to fit in, and there's an awful lot of rough edges that don't get smoothed out. They understand their role in the combat zone. So they come home, but not all the way home. As a civilian, your life goes on normally every day. You get up, you go to work, uh, come home, do normal things. Once you go to war, when you come home, Things have changed forever. You're never the same person. I, I think that PTSD occurs for most of us when we become hypervigilant 24 hours a day because of uncertainty. PTSD is where you're stuck on on all the time and everything you do is amplified. When that's reinforced with the horrors of war, it's very intense conditioning and they're reluctant to let that up because that's what allowed them to survive. A person is reacting to a life-threatening or deeply emotionally threatening event. Any reminder of the trauma itself will trigger a response and the memory of this horrible event will come crashing in. The most terrifying thing was Huey helicopter. The Huey helicopter had a distinct sound and being home and having a Huey helicopter fly overhead was just like you were back in Vietnam. PTSD manifests itself in a lot of different kinds of behaviors that are all driven by processes deep inside the middle part of the brain. Went to a 4th of July and all of a sudden you hear fireworks going, you might jump under a table or do something like that just because of your experiences in combat. So when we're faced with existential threats, the brain instructs the body in exactly what to do to maximize its chances of survival. And it usually does that with a series of behaviors. Episodes of rage, Hyper alertness. There was a lot of alcohol and drug abuse. You don't even want to touch your kids because you're afraid somebody might hurt them. Chronic fatigue. We know we're going to be dreaming, so we avoid sleeping as much as possible. You wake up with nightmares, anger, intrusive thoughts every day of uh, what went on, what you saw, and the list can go on. And, and on and on and on, it just goes on like that. 
The experience of not knowing whether or not you were going to make it through the next 24 hours just changes a way a person looks at life. Bottom line is, from the top on down, no one had prepared for this kind of pain and this internal destruction of the individuals that saw the horrors of war. All that time, I really didn't know what exactly I was getting myself into, to tell you the truth. You know, I was, I was in Vietnam in uh, 1967, where I was wounded at three separate times. Was it all worth it? To who? And for what purpose? What is the bottom line of anybody going to war? I mean... Your meaning does not depend upon someone else's motives. When soldiers came back from war, people saw them as some sort of agents of the political structure when they really weren't. They were just there doing a job and trying their best to survive. Those who fought in that war became stuck with images of trauma and atrocities that did not belong to them, which they had not committed. Children were given live grenades and sent running towards our troops in Vietnam. Those kinds of situations caused what's called moral injury. The American military establishment is very good at taking a little boy off the street and turning him into a killer. One day you're in combat and the next day you're shown the front gate. I think the lesson of that is it is important if you've been in combat to get some distance emotionally from that combat while getting some help in dealing with some of the stuff you were exposed to or involved in. I've had veterans tell me that they don't feel they can ever be participants in society again. They feel condemned. We've all sinned. We've all come short. You've got to understand that as a warrior, you were called upon to do those things. You did them because your country asked you to. You did them to stay alive. You did them to keep the man or woman next to you alive. Don't worry about getting forgiveness for that. I remember going in and people asking me, why did you not go to the aid station to get help? I said, yeah, right, how can you go when you're the commander of 200 men and you're saying to you guys, listen, I'm feeling a little woozy. I need to go see the aid station, see if they can help me with my mental problem. What are you doing to the men that trust in what you say and how you think? You can't do that and be effective with your unit. I thought for a long time that I was just an anti-social jerk. It wasn't until after I retired and was away from the police department that I realized that there was in fact something about my makeup that wasn't normal. After years of difficulties and many failed relationships, many, many, many jobs, I walked into a vet center. They were non-judgmental and they listened to me. And I think that was so different than anything I've ever experienced before. You have to appreciate this was 25 years after Vietnam. They introduced me to the idea of post-traumatic stress disorder. I had no idea that I was suffering for all that period of time, and that explained a lot and, and helped me to put my life in a little bit better perspective. The war itself was a divisive one for sure, and one of the great tragedies about this war is that the troops weren't celebrated. I think that every war, by definition, involves trauma. What I see about Vietnam veterans tells me that there was something different about this war in ways that I think we're only now, 40 years later, beginning to understand and acknowledge. They felt very deeply the abandonment of the American people. I think that's a part of the PTSD is having your country hate you. And it literally, if you watch the news, hated you. Here are the people that we were fighting to save them from this misery, and they were attacking us. So there's still anger in there. You know, you'll never forget it. Not only did the country turn on the war, but the country turned on the Vietnam vets themselves. 
And that's why many of them never got treatment. You learn to trust in the brother next to you and his rifle and his abilities. And then you come home and that brother's not there. I have found when I sit down and start talking to veterans, you have to build a trusting relationship. They have to know that you mean what you say before they will open up to you. Being able to talk about your experiences is really, really important. For a veteran to walk through the door it takes a lot of courage. What the vet centers provide for veterans is a safe place to just come and talk. Only veterans can understand what, what veterans have experienced. You can talk to them without uh, anybody judging you. Man, I, really that's what saved me from going back to drinking. I mean, just being with other veterans. It's a hard thing to start talking about the issues and then they will start talking about them and they will keep talking about them and they will find a relief in being able to share with somebody those things that they had to do in a war zone. The system has been slow to provide supports, but things are getting better. There are a growing number of methods to help our veterans. Knowing that there was something wrong was half the battle. Now getting help or finding someone who cared was the second half. PTSD does not go away generally with time alone. Treatment for PTSD is not only possible, but it is important. The good news is that you don't have to suffer these symptoms forever. There are modalities out there that are aimed to help these symptoms go away. More relaxation, more comfort, and better sleep improves everything. VetTrip is a program of volunteers serving veterans with post-traumatic stress and chronic pain. Drop their pain levels, drop their stress levels, and get them relief. All of a sudden, they have the freedom then to experience their emotions. And it always helps to talk, but more importantly, to listen. Good psychotherapy is the way that you will begin to really untie that knot. Work on diet, yoga, acupuncture. Writing the narrative of the event itself can be really helpful. Mindfulness practice, learning how to allow yourself to quiet your mind, getting more in touch with your body. I tell you, take a veteran, put them out in a canoe or whitewater rafting or, or fishing or, or hunting or horseback, doing things. They're athletes. So put them back in the environment that they love. And it's amazing, especially with other veterans. Amazing how transformative that is and then they can start that recovery process. The goal of therapy is not to make people forget things that happen, but rather to learn to live and cope with them. So when we say we want to close the chapter on this, it's not closing the chapter on our friends. I don't think you're ever free of it. You learn to manage, but it, it's always with you. You'll never forget it. Your PTSD episodes are caused by what is known as triggers. Those triggering events can bring up thoughts as well as emotional and physical responses. My wife laughs that I'll go six blocks out of my way to avoid waiting at a red light. But waiting at a red light for me is stressful. If you could learn to be a soldier, you can learn to be a citizen again and you can learn to live in a world without war. And then you can begin your journey to recovery one small step at a time. The veterans I've seen that do best in getting over their PTSD, somewhere along the way in their journey, learn to experience something bigger than they are. I realize now that belief in a deity is necessary for PTSD recovery. You have to believe in something. You have to believe it's possible, or you have to believe in tomorrow. To feel healed inside, in our souls, in our spirit, that's where it starts. And the recovery that starts inside will ultimately radiate to the outside, to the body, to our relationships, and to the way we function in society. It took a long time for me 
I took a wife who really loved me uh, and a pastor who took me under his arm and showed me what love was about and showed me what trust was about. Finding what fits you best and the idea is to not quit because these symptoms can be reduced and don't let anyone tell you different. They can. You just have to turn around and take the time to face it and learn and heal. There is help out there. Don't be afraid to ask for help and don't be afraid to accept the help. The difference between one who is a victim and one who is in recovery is the one who is in motion. There are lots of ways that you can get involved with veterans, offering the opportunity to come together to find community. So important. My family always understood that there were things that I just didn't like to do or wouldn't do, and they didn't push me on them. They supported me. If you're the loved one of somebody who is dealing with this, understand that it isn't something that they can just get over. It isn't something they can just stop. There's a lot of pieces to that puzzle. When you come home, you expect the home to be the same as when you left it, and that's no longer true. Many of them, when they came back, worked two, three jobs and kept themselves so busy that that kind of kept the bad memories out of their minds. And so later on, when they retired, they had more time and they started remembering things, and that's when their PTSD really kicked in. If the warrior is willing to reach out to get help, the spouse needs to understand that those same people that are helping him have helped other spouses, and they have to be willing to get help also. My hero. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I get a lot of peace of mind from my wife. She's a great support. He's mellowed, I guess, a lot, and he's happier. The thing that has helped us the most was the counseling. Those of us who didn't have it at first we're blaming ourselves, and I know that it ruined many marriages. After a couple of years of talking to somebody, I made some major changes in my life, and one of those was going to get my master's degree and becoming a social worker with the intent of working at a vet center so that I could help other veterans from combat just like I was helped. I became a chaplain because I wanted to make sure that other Men and women realize that there are people out there that trust them. Things take time to heal. My heart goes out to the people who support people who serve. Their role is exceedingly difficult and requires the gentle touch and a lot of patience. A lot of patience. You have to have something to do that brings you peace. When I'm concentrating on painting, I'm not thinking about things that are bothering me. I can lose myself. This is my sanctuary. This is where I go for therapy. If you can do something as difficult as go to war, you can come home. The war we fought is over. It is true that we were treated unfairly when we arrived, but two wrongs don't make a right. It is not in vain the suffering that our Vietnam veterans have endured, and it's time to heal, and it is possible to heal. I came home from Vietnam in 1969. It's been a long journey. I think it's important for today's soldier to understand that he's not alone in what he's going through. And if you show the desire, there's lots of people that will help you. Even if it's been 40 years, get the help that you deserve and make your future the way you had dreamed it was going to be before you went to Vietnam. Don't give up. Uh, stay away from alcohol and drugs. Uh, life is beautiful once you start to see that there's a lot of ways to help somebody. And it takes time and a lot of love a lot of patience, learn from these experiences, share these experiences with, with people that can understand. It's life, it has its joys and it has its sorrows and they go hand in hand. I feel a resurgent sense of hope. The people who fought in Vietnam have changed things in some way forever for the people who fought thereafter. 
And it wasn't until they saw their younger brethren in arms, the ones who went to fight in Afghanistan and Iraq and other places, be so devastated by the experience that it brought them out of the woodwork to say, yes, we felt that too. And if they have done that, and even if they have done only that, they have done something of great worth for our nation. And so it's up to us to be clever and put together ways that our heroes can come all the way home. And understand that being a mighty warrior is not a sin, it's a calling. You were called to it, you stepped up, you fought the good fight. Now you can lay down your arms and then this world will start seeing what a mighty warrior is all about. I cannot tell you that you can change your past, but I can sure tell you that you can change the ending of the story of your life. It's been a long time for our Vietnam vets. Welcome home. Close to Home, Changed by War was co-produced by PBS 39 and Lehigh Valley Health Network with support from Air Products, Capital Blue Cross, and viewers like you.